Welcome to a brand new episode of the Pick a Side podcast. We are reacting live after every game one of the NBA playoffs finished. Fellas, this is the first time since the 2012-2013 season that every single home team won game one. If you were to rate this weekend of hoops of basketball, would you rate it? It's a good weekend overall. There was a couple of blowouts, but there was a couple of good games we got. I would say like 7.8 out of 10. Okay. I'm I not mad 6. at that. 6.5. I, all right, Riv. You're also cooking because today's games got saved by the Pelicans and OKC. Undoubtedly. Today was a lot of get the shit beat out of you basketball by teams that are simply just better. Well, at least they just played better today. And OKC is supposed to be the better team. The Pelicans just went out there and played their ass off. But it got saved. It got saved by hey, well, a great I thought, game. I thought Celtics seat was a phenomenal game. Everyone's saying all the games were mid except the last one. Celtics seat was tremendous, I thought. Listen, man, nobody wants to watch that snooze fest. Uh, Nobody's interested in that Peyton series, Pritchard. Stels. You know, it must be nice having a superstar player that can score 19 points and your team still wins by 20, 30 points. First of all, I put points? up 23. Second of all, triple double. <laughs> 19 points when it mattered. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, how many of those points the game really didn't matter at Yo, all? Yo, Riv, you know, I mean, we were like, up 30 in the third quarter. You know, it was like 30 times more entertaining. What? Watching the Mavericks get the absolute piss water <laughs> kicked out of them. Uh, that was great. That was actually great to see. But I was actually surprised as fuck. That yo, that caught like that. the yo. I'm Come not even fight. gonna lie to you, Riv. I was not expecting to come up here and, and, well, and I, I was the most excited about was to watch Halley play uh playoff basketball. You know, that was uh that was fun to watch. Up. You know, it was just triple single. Here we go. I remember when those are we days. Start man? Conversations that Siakam's the best player on the team. I remember sure. those days, man. They were talking about he's uh the next Steve Nash. You and, know, uh, I was I was waiting on a Warriors appearance, but I realized I wasn't getting oh, one. Shit. Oh shit! And the Bulls, oh, shit. I mean, uh, the Bulls, where were they? Did, did, were they here? I mean, there was apparently to be a Jimmy Butler less Heat team, and they lost. Oh, they got smacked. God. Apparently, they were where I thought Howie would be because the way he was playing, it didn't look like he was out there either. Now, listen, uh, basketball wasn't the only thing that happened this this weekend because uh, I don't know if you guys tuned into the boxing fight with Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. I did. But that was a spectacle. Uh, Ryan Garcia was an underdog, plus 800 odds, and he ended up beating Devin Haney, and uh, he really beat him, knocked him down three times, and some can argue that the referee was saving Devin Haney in, in, the, in I think, around seven, around eight. I was going to say they took a point away from him because he was boxing in the clinch, even though that was a bit much. Uh, but at the same time, Garcia was able to put him to the mat multiple multiple times and it's funny too because if you looked at the the scorecards as the fight was going on it was like a one point difference but then when it got to the very end and it had the official scorecards it wasn't even close outside of that one judge who had it as a draw but i mean ryan garcia goes and he's been erratic i guess to be kind just his social media personality is all over the place but end of the day, he went out there and he executed and, and bro gave one of the crazier upsets we've seen in recent memory. Uh, Speaking, I, don't, I don't watch uh, boxing unless tank fights. So uh, OK, tank tank, is your favorite. that's it. Yo, but that's also a big reason why people don't fuck with Ryan Garcia anymore, because Ryan Garcia had hella hype going into that tank fight and take put him to the dirt. And then he Ryan Garcia kind of took his foot off the gas, but he's back. I don't know if you guys saw the pictures comparing ryan garcia this fight versus the tank davis fight and how his body body looks noticeably different because in a tank fight he had a dehydration clause so he couldn't go over 135 before or after weigh-ins and uh you, you could see his body was noticeably weaker in the tank fight i think tank is the best boxer in the world right now uh him and terrence crawford but uh i like tank davis and i like that you like watching them riff he said, uh, Garcia said he like physically cannot go to one down to 140. It like really hurts him. So it made sense that he fights more like up. He said he's going up to 147. I did see that. There's a lot of heavy hitters on 147. So we're we going to see uh, how he does. Uh, NBA playoff games, if you want, we guys, we could get through today's games and talk about the more entertaining games that happened on Saturday. So starting off first, we had the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics. I'm not sure how much time you guys want to spend on this. We'll let Dells talk. 
What is there to talk about? Great team is win. There to talk about how Jason Tatum was the only negative on the starting. <laughs> I'm just fucking around, Joel. I'm just fucking around. I did see that. That was kind of nuts. It must have been second half, third quarter. Facts. I'm guessing when they won that mm-hmm. run or fourth quarter. We in the fourth quarter. Um, now great game. Listen, I, I said I wanted to play the Heat. I wanted to play the Heat with Jimmy Butler though because I felt like we could kind of get over this hump and that could give us a little, you know, a little nitro boost in this playoff run. Um, but you know, we've been doing a really good job against the Heat all season long. Adding Porzingis in that uh, to be kind of a zone beater has been tremendous. And I thought in the first half, Tatum Tatum played one of his better halves of basketball. I thought in that game, he was inviting double teams. Um, he was making an extra pass. He had I think 15, five and five going into the half. Overall, I thought he had a really good game defensively too. I don't know if you guys saw the Caleb Martin little dirty play at the end of the game. Yep. Um, Drew Holiday kind of pushed him, and then Caleb Martin kind of bumped into Tatum. Maybe he could have stopped him. Maybe he could have held Tatum up. But uh, a lot of Celtics fans on my timeline weren't happy about that. But, I mean, if the Celtics are locked in, if they're going to keep playing like this, this should be a four or five game series. The unfortunate truth is you 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 can't trust that off last season, understanding that Celtics kind of play with their food a little bit. We went into every single series feeling that the Boston Celtics were the better team. This one may be different because their star player is not going to be there for what's seeming – to be the entire series and and i'm with you joel you guys are simply playing at too high a level right now you guys are just operating at a different level so i i anticipate this to be a quick one but that's the kind of tempo that you need to set and that's the kind of the gold standard you need to set for the playoffs moving forward you need to handle the light work and get on to these more difficult series where right now i don't know if there's going to be an overly difficult series for you just looking at the the landscape of teams outside of, of course, the New York Knicks. I think this is a sweep. You guys are able to go on avalanches of three points shooting. We had twenty threes attempted in the first quarter. It's kind of hilarious. Yeah, you guys are able to go on these runs where it, it's just unstoppable. You can't do anything about it. And I don't think the Heat have the firepower to compete with you guys. I will say though. I think that the Heat do have a lot of good young role players that if there was another young star to pair up with Jimmy and Bam, this is a a really a a team that's a threat. I mean, last year they went to the finals, but uh, like Bam, Jovic, Hero, Hakez, I think it's a good young core. And I wish Mm -hmm. that they would have been healthy to to beat you guys. I would have at least said they would have lost in (laughs) six. Hakez and Jovic were pro- arguably the two best players on the court for them today. Uh, Bam was solid too, but just at their age, being able to do what they do since they've had this freedom, no Terry there, no Jimmy Butler. I thought they both looked really good for their first playoff games. Um, Next game, or oh, you oh, want to talk about this game, Riff? I thought Boston was trolling, honestly. I thought y'all could have <laughs> beat him by 40. Like, I genuinely, we were up 30, and yeah, then like, they went on – DeLon yeah, Wright hit like, five threes in the fourth quarter. <laughs> you guys, it just felt like y'all were like foot on their – like you had the foot on the pedal, but you were kind of like – Nah, we're going to chill for a little bit. Um, yeah, that good co- young core stuff. I don't really see what you see in Tyler Hero. I don't think he's good, like, at all. Drew Holiday honestly. had him in hell. Yeah, so, I, I really don't think Tyler Is this uh, his last year as a Miami Heat? I hope so. Got it. For them to get somebody, they got to move him, unfortunately. They're not moving Bam, so. The only positive for the Heat going into this series is the fact that the young kids get playoff experience. The fact that Jovic, the fact that Hawkes are now getting to experience playoff basketball. That's about the only positive right now that you have if you're a Miami Heat fan because there's really not much else to 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 be happy about Look, just playing the Boston Celtics right now. Didn't he end your season, Riff? Who? Tyler Hill. <laughs> oh, the whole team did. Did go oh, crazy. Wow. They were beating us by 20. I'm just saying, man. Tyler Hero's solid. He's not no star, but he's solid. He's a he's a solid player. I don't think you guys have an ECF appearance in your lifetime. The Knicks? Yeah. I was What's born in 1999. Yes, we did. All right. I mean, <laughs> I think you were born in the summer, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it didn't happen in your lifetime. But you know what? Fine. Oh the, my you know, the God. year after we made the finals, cool. we made the ECF, actually. Check your facts. 2000? Yes. Okay. All right. All you right. got it. Right. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think you were a yeah, fan in that year. Listen, the, right. the point is that we're going to make it this year. We're going to make it this year. Possible. That's what's going to happen. Uh, next game that happened today, the Clippers beat the Mavericks 109 to 97. Um, no Kawhi Leonard in game one. I think he might play in game two. He'll probably play game three. The Mavericks won the second half. I, I'm looking at the score. <laughs> 
in the third quarter, the Mavericks scored 34 points. The Clippers Respect scored 31. That. Respect that. In the fourth quarter, the Mavericks scored 33 <laughs> points. The Clippers scored 22 <laughs> points. That's the headline. Oh, my That's the headline God. you take away from you this game. You cannot win the a game oh when you are God. down by 26 points in the first half. You shoot 22% from three. You shoot 11% from three. You can, uh, You cannot win a playoff game like that. They dug themselves in too big of a hole in that first half to come back in the second half, even though there were stretches where you thought a comeback could be on the horizon. Uh, something to take away. I mean, Kyrie Irving, um, I'm, I'm, I'm told that he doesn't perform in the playoffs. He had 31 points in this game. They he were looked down damn good. Third quarter, third quarter, in the third quarter, a he had 20 points. But, of course, you know, I think he was trying to one, save Luca's legacy. Game one was about Zubac early in this game bullied Daniel Gafford. It didn't look like Daniel Gafford was a starting center against Zubac early in this game. Zubac <laughs> bullied him. Tyson Chandler. <laughs> and then you had James Harden set the tone as well. PJ James Watson Harden. Game one Harden. James Harden, 28 points, 8 assists. And then nope. off the bench, Russell Westbrook, his defense on Luka, mm. is transition offense mm. i thought russell westbrook was everywhere game one was a perfect storm for the clippers they played a great Yo, round of basketball where the fuck was derrick jones i don't know he was out there doing something could be cardio yelling it's supposed to be one of the best isolation perimeter defenders uh, what the fuck is he doing brother. today i love that um joel started with the they won the second half that was very very funny you um, had to try and take some positive yeah, he, he definitely the did because the, the start the start of the game it was belts to ass like it was just straight uh, ass whooping from the start you know i do think ty Lu had his guys pretty much prepared for that game you know i think he had them ready and and to come out with a statement like that to be up 26 in the first half i believe it was like 30 to 56 to hold him to 30 points was you know impressive I, I do think dallas had got some good looks in the first half they just didn't hit but i also think the clippers were able to generate a pretty efficient offense in the first half driving and kicking making the extra pass ty lose like his ability to keep giving getting zubak the ball he saw a mismatch zubak was pretty much damn near and unstoppable down there and then the, just the other guys you know team man amir coffee making plays james harden being alive in the first half I do think team man's defense on Luca was pretty good. You know, you can you, you, you it's Luca. You know, you, you're gonna try your best. I thought team man did a good job. You know, I thought in the first half they did a good job on Kyrie. Of course, Kyrie had the big third quarter when they were already down 30. That sounds cool and all. But nonetheless, I do think Dallas figured out a little something in the second half. You know, throw two guys at Paul George, make him make an extra pass. You know, I think that was interesting to see how the Clippers kind of were. But they were playing a different game. The second half, they were more so trying to waste time as opposed to really keep their foot on the pedal, which I wish they would have done. But big win for the Clippers. I mean, big win for a team that pretty much everybody was was rooting for Dallas. You know, they thought a third time's a charm. No Kawhi. This is definitely over. And to go out there, have a statement win, especially Ty Luz. Every time he saw a run about to happen or he saw, like, you know, Dallas about to catch steam, he called a timeout, make a big play, an ATO, and then they'll, you know, go back on their little run. So I like how Ty Lue just adjusted, and I thought he outcoached Jason Kidd. You know, the Clippers, the way they played in the first half, definitely came out to play. Statement win, must win. If Kawhi does come back Friday, you know, you got a 1-1 situation that, that would look good. You know, the, um, Dallas is going to come out on fire for game two, but. Listen, if you're able to steal the second game and then Kawhi comes back game three, it's going to look real dark for Dallas. But nonetheless, big win. You know, I, I was told it was no shot even with Kawhi. But then again, they just won without Kawhi. So it's looking real different. But uh, shout out to the Clippers for a big win, man. This was a statement win for sure. I don't understand how it's stealing game two. They're home. They should win these home games. Stealing. They, 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 they don't have Kawhi. No Kawhi. They, they, they don't no Kawhi. have Kawhi. These Kawhi are all steals. Huge. What are you doing? What do you if go? you Everyone's if you are down O two, you take if Dallas takes care of home. The series is tied two two. If you're down O two with no Kawhi, Kawhi comes back. You're embarrassing. Kawhi is <laughs> not gonna. He's not. I think he's gonna come back game two. I think game game five game three is Friday. So I would I would push for game three. It's mad far. It's mm -hmm. Friday. That's just me. They already whipped your ass game one. It's not a big deal to lose game two. That's just me though. But Riv, let me let me let me piggyback off of what you're saying because talk about the, the deadline guys too. The, uh, the, oh, happily, um, 
But when the lead got pushed to 14, when the, well, let me say the deficit for the Mavs got pushed to 14. This was right after Luka Doncic just hit a three. Ty Lue calls a timeout. They come right back. The next two possessions, two buckets. Now the game's back to 18, and now you're back to playing comfortable basketball. Ty Lue was on it every single step of the way in the second half. You could say the Mavericks won in the second half. If that makes oh, you did. feel, if that points, makes you feel good, if yes. that makes you go and, and put that put your head on that pillow and sleep well at night, hey, your prerogative. But in that first half, it was nothing short of an absolute ass kicking. Eight points for one of the league's best offenses. In a quarter is embarrassing, especially when you have one of the best players in the world in Luka Doncic, who should be the MVP of the league, in my opinion. And Kyrie Irving also struggling. Both of them did find a way to figure it out in the second half, mo mostly a Kyrie Irving. But he was just super uber efficient, of course. In the second half, so was Luka Doncic. But Luka really did struggle in that first half. You, you you gotta you gotta figure it out. Is this going to be a Derek Lively series? Is he going to have to be the one that matches up with Zubak? Now Daniel Gafford, who has been so huge for them since getting acquired at the trade deadline, it was shocking for me to see Zoo just absolutely torch him every time that that he had the ball in his hands. So I don't know what's going to be the the assignment or the adjustment in that situation. Is this going to be a Lively series? But defensively, they're going to have to figure it out because you just let them beat your ass without their best player. And let's give credit where credit is due. We were very critical on James Harden. We understand he had a terrible march, did not play that great of a basketball in April. This was his best game in almost a month of NBA basketball. And he waited until the very first game of the playoffs when he knew that the guy on the team was not present. James Harden goes out there and hits six threes. Give credit to, of course, you mentioned it already, Joel, giving credit to Russell Westbrook. Just the energy he brings. The crowd is always going to rally behind Russell Westbrook. He's just one of those guys that's an energizer bunny to a team. He was desperately missed, and now he's back. He was playing some high-level defense. The one thing I'll say is Paul George was hitting some tough shots. I don't want to see him get complacent with some of these shots that he was settling for in the second half. He did make some timely ones to continue just – making sure that the lead was safe. And I think you are right, Riv. They they were playing conservatively, just trying to waste a little clock, not show too much of your hand. It is game one of the series, and you don't know how much you are not going to have Kawhi Leonard for in this series, so just in case. But again, I, I want to see them clean it up a little bit in that regard. You could have you, – you made this one – for, for – for, Clippers fans who who know nothing but sadness when it comes to playoff basketball, you kind of stressed them out a little bit. But hey, credit to credit to Ty Lue. He always had this one in, in in hand, and they were able to execute at a high level. Mavericks got to come out and be better, especially if Kawhi Leonard's not going to be on the floor for Game Two. I mean, if you guys believe so, but if he's not going to be on the floor for Game Two. The Mavericks have to come out with some energy. They're going to have to come out with some sense of urgency because stealing one on the Clippers' home court can completely put this series on the head top. This game and the Bucks game, I think, were the two biggest wins for their respective teams. Having both of your guys be out, both your key guys be out, having Kawhi hurt, you're at home, you're coming up against a Mavericks team who, you know, Rib mentioned, a lot of people are taking the Mavericks in the series. It is a bit concerning that, Regardless of the terrible second quarter, score eight points. It's one of the worst quarters of basketball you'll see, period, let alone for the playoffs. But it is a bit concerning that this was basically the Luka and Kyrie, Kyrie show and no one else is going to show up. Because although these players have played tremendous down the stretch of the season, we look at Daniel Gafford, we look at Derek Jones Jr., when you look at P.J. Washington, Dante Exum, all of them have been phenomenal to end the regular season. But we've seen role players in the past aren't always able to keep that up in the playoffs. Now, it seems unlikely that they're going to shoot this poorly again, where Kyrie and Luka have to combine for, you know, damn near 70, 80% of your points. There's going to be games where that's necessary because these are the two stars of your team and they're going to have to take over, especially down the stretch. But you can't go 75, 80%, in this case, the entire game with no role players showing up. You know, even if it's defensively making some um, high effort plays, I thought Luka was getting picked on a ton, especially in that first half where it's the playoffs. This is the time where I need you to, at the minimum, show effort on defense. I thought he was getting picked apart. Um, but also, this, this kind of felt like a mindset game where... The Clippers go into this game knowing they don't have Kawhi Leonard. 
the Mavericks, on the other hand, go into um, Los Angeles hearing. I don't know how much noise they're really hearing, but the media, at least what we're, we're hearing is everyone's on the Mavericks. The Clippers don't have Kawhi, even with Kawhi. Like Riff said, we were still thinking the Mavericks were going to win. And you go in there kind of thinking we already beat our opponent. And I didn't think the effort was there in that first half. Um, I thought on both sides of the balls, but especially on defense, it was a pretty bad effort for your first playoff game this season. It's a seven-game series. I think every other series that Luka has won, he has been down 0-1. So I can't say that the series is over after one game. But this is a huge win for the Clippers because it seems like at least Kawhi compared to Giannis is a lot closer to returning. If he's able to come back game three at the latest, you go into Dallas tied at 1-1, worst case scenario, you would take that any day of the week. The the stat of the game is the three point shooting. The Mavericks hit 10 threes, shot 30 percent, and the Clippers hit 18 threes and shot 50 percent. You know, that discrepancy is a 24 point discrepancy. And the Mavericks, they live and die by the three. That's what they are. They are a team that's offense is re relying upon three point shooting variancy. And in the first half, it wasn't just the role players not hitting shots. It was Luka, I think, one for six or one for seven from three in the first half. It was Kyrie Irving not getting going until the third quarter. They're not going to have another half as bad as that one. They're not going to have a quarter as bad as that one. So as long as they can stay in the game offensively, they'll be fine. Because in that second half, whenever they went on spurts and runs, they were still down 15-plus points. You know, it only, it only took down a lead by this much. I will say, though, for every Mavericks run, the Clippers had a counterpunch, and that was good to see. The Mavericks have to limit these three-point shots. I mean, I don't know how many open three-point shots Russell Westbrook, Amir Coffey, and Terrence Mann had combined. It had to be like six or eight of them that they just left them completely wide open. Russ hit like, what, two, three, two or three threes in this game? I mean, those are shots that you live with, but he hit them, and th that's just what it is. You know, they were just way better from three. They they also um <clears throat> for Dallas didn't play defense like when you, when you when you can get in, like in the second half when they started to get rolling I don't think the problem was you know their offense because when they started to figure it out you saw okay you was getting in your mind maybe they can make a run the problem is they could not get a string of stops at all throughout the game they couldn't get two to three to four to five consistent stops so you can even even if you get close fourteen points fifteen points we know in this new NBA. You know, it's not that big of a deal if you're down 14, 15. If you can't string along four to five stops in a row, there's just no chance. And like like Dells mentioned, Luca was in every single action in the first half. Whether it was Luca, Gafford, like they just were completely putting those two guys in action and they were exploiting them the whole game. Um, question, Joel. No no love for your brother James Harden? Like not a mention? <laughs> I did mention him. I didn't hear it. I don't remember. I did mention him. Uh, it was in that monologue that must have been brief. I don't know. Wow. No, I mentioned him. I said he had 28 points and eight assists. I 100% oh, wow. mentioned him. That's such That's a it. great mention. That's Six for 11 well. from three. No, yeah, he played great. I mean, uh, James Harden, I said, I said, and he would. He set the tone with Zubac. Zubac set the tone, and then James Harden set the tone in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Y'all got to listen better up here, man. Damn Gafford, man. Huh. Hey, he ain't Washington. come to play. He ain't come to play. He's going like to come to play out there. Ooh, because Derek Jones one hundred percent positive, the Mavericks will win Game Two, and then they'll win Game that. Three. You know, then they'll win Game Three. You said that about Game One. Game Three. You said that about Game One. Let's get one. Just gotta get one. Luca's gonna get me one, baby. It's Luka Doncic. They they're not gonna have a half that they play that poorly from on offense. They're not gonna have that. The problem is, are they gonna have a half like that on defense? As long as they do what they have to do on offense, it's going to be mm. a tie score. It I really it, doesn't matter. No, the, the defense, this the defense cannot defense? be this bad. Bro, this defense the, cannot be this bad. Guys, I don't care how good the coach is. It was bro. the number one the defense. defense was embarrassing. It deadline, looked like guys. Indiana. Guys, the defense it was, was the number one defense since the trade deadline. Like, what? Why? Why? I, I'm so shocked this happened. That's all out the window now, brothers. The playoffs. Yeah, that deep listen, deep. Without, the Kawhi, still advance. without Kawhi, Riff, are they serious? I have no comment. Man. This is the, next this game, is man. Next game. Lord the have Bucks, mercy. The Bucks beat the Pacers 100 knots in 94 in Big game one. one. And I think this Give is flowers. a statement, statement win from Dame, 35 points. I mean, you talking about me giving him flowers. We could give Dame flowers, but have you guys noticed that Whenever Giannis doesn't play, it feels like this Dame comes out. Th this Dame yes. comes to comes to play. Saying this, I mean, yeah, this is first round is, Dame. 
This the is ish, also and his first round, round game, so that also boosts yeah. him up a couple attribute points. I've been saying this for a little the bit. The thing is, is that why can't he play like this when he's with Giannis as well? Ooh, What's wrong? Is he a player know. who cannot? He cannot coexist with another co-star? Mm. Are we getting to that territory? French. But nonetheless, Dane played great. Chris Middleton had 20 points. I think the Bucks can win this series without Giannis. As long as they get Dame playing at a high level, at an all NBA level, and they get Chris Middleton averaging 20 points, they can win this series. I think top to bottom, they have a better team, even if Giannis isn't involved than the Pacers. And Dame should be the best player in this series. You have nothing else to say? About the Pacers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. you want me to criticize. I just want to know what but you, you want me to say. criticize a player, a point guard who is still dealing with a hamstring injury. Oh my God! I don't know what you want me to do, Rich. Never realized that the body part that Joel excuses the most is the hamstring. Like it always comes back to that. Because it because it it matters. Playing on a bad hammy matters. Well, you were you were calling him a superstar in November. I'm just want to I want to see. He was healthy. Was he healthy, Riff? Sure, it's November. Is he healthy now? Is he healthy before Christmas? Is he healthy now? That was seven months ago. He's not healthy. If if he's Uh, healthy, he's playing. I mean, he was running up and down. He looked healthy to me. The cardio was there. Maybe you know, I don't. I don't like he, you know, he. This hamstring is saving his legacy. If I'm being honest, if it wasn't for this hamstring, there'd be some different what? conversations. Listen, like, Riv, the listen, hamstring Riv, itself. Listen, Riv. He's been back from this hammy for months. Listen, Riv. If you, whenever it's a, it's a player that struggles, you chop at the bits. Whether it's Tyler Hero, whether it's Tyrese Halliburton, you couldn't say that about Anthony Edwards, by the way, because Anthony Edwards I picked a, Minnesota. Had, Anthony Edwards had the best nah, game one day. He had the James. best game there was debut. one person to not pick the Wolves. That doesn't matter. You. I'm an Anthony you. Edwards fan. It Dude, doesn't we matter. We don't know that. We don't know that. You, don't know you don't know that. You pick the signs. What do you mean? Drew, have you not been rooting for Philly all year long? You say Correct. you're a Joel Embiid fan, right? Hey, you picked hey. the Knicks to win the series, and I still feel firmly okay. on that. Okay, I'm not here. Well, you're not rooting. a Joel Embiid fan. Here you're not a Joel Embiid Sixers. fan. So you're I'm not, not a Joel here Embiid rooting fan. for the Sixers. So you're no. not a Joel Embiid fan. No. So Joel Embiid fan. I'm not, I, I just, listen, I'll always be a Joel Embiid. You know what it is, Joel? Because the Knicks are better. The Suns are not better than Minnesota. The Suns beat them three times in the regular season. Right, the they season. Ass whipped There's game a reason one. why I picked game the Suns one, to win it wasn't series. even close. I, I am the most unbiased analyst in the world. I'm not going to let my player fandom get in the way of my playoff pick. Ultimately, I know that Riv hates on Anthony Edwards. He's, that is he, true. He's told us to true. our face before. This is a fact. He right. hates on Anthony You're Edwards, cooking. and this he came to play. And he came to play, baby, because you know and, he's a playoff riser. And, and when we get to that segment, trust and believe, I will be giving him praise because. The other guy, I hate loss. So I, th- that's a win-win for me anyways. But for this specific conversation, I just want you to keep the same energy. You were calling Halley a superstar because of an in-season tournament. Because he's so, hurt. And, and he's so, hurt. And, I, and I'm trying hurt. to figure out where was the superstar today. That's all I'm asking. The superstar Dave, was there. The superstar Dave was came there. to rock. Talk. Pascal came to who? Oh, his healthy, his healthy body is still in November. It's not, it's not here no more. Well, November. you know what? Brother, it's April twenty second. I'm it's sorry. April 22nd. It takes a while for a hamstring to get right. I bet it, not this it's long. long. Not this wow. long. It takes not a while. If it's, it's this a, bad, if it's a mental toll. It's a mental toll. You got a mental playing. toll. I mean, come he should on, not be playing about? if it's been three months at this point and he's still over this hamstring. Come also, on. it's it's one game. Tyrese Halliburton is going to come back and bounce he back. He has been too. playing. He has not been playing at superstar level since. No, he's not. But he's still he still averaged nineteen and eleven. He's still leading the league in assists. Maybe nice and maybe 11. he was never a superstar. <laughs> we put him in that conversation a little too early. Maybe that was the thing, and there's nothing wrong with that. I still no. think he has that type of potential, though. You think he doesn't? But, but no, wait. But I don't even know why how that even came about because we're not talking about potential. You put him there already. I want to see him healthy for an entire season. When he's healthy, I it's know what he can that do. Never happened. He's when, been, when, he's been when Tyrese, back here. when Tyrese is one hundred percent healthy, I know what he can do. I know what he can. You do. have like ten games of that. Is he going to be one hundred percent next more. October? Is that the way next time he's going to be one hundred percent? Way more. <laughs> I have no idea. All I know is that yeah, you know. When Tyrese Halliburton is at his best. He's one of the best point guards in the NBA. Even with him struggling like this, he's still one of the ten best point guards in the NBA. He's you leading from, the league in assists. Five still. to ten. Listen, to talk about the game for a little bit. I'm, uh, you know, Halley, uh, he had a triple single. He didn't play well. Um, <laughs> he, he did a lot of running, um, for sure. But I do think 
in terms of this matchup between Indiana and Milwaukee, I just think Milwaukee, like you mentioned, Joel, they just have a lot more firepower. You know, Indiana defensively cannot – they just cannot get consistent stops. And if you have Dame playing like this, and we know how Dame is in the first round, you know, we, we never expect him to play bad. He played a great first half. He was amazing this game. I think for Dame, the conversation will come in the next rounds when Giannis comes back against the Knicks or against Boston. Like, that will be the real conversation. But I do think – Dame and Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez, they can win this series by themselves. I think Giannis can take his time. It may stretch out a little longer, like it may go to six or seven. But I think Dame and Middleton, they're enough to get it done. Just offensively, they were on fire this game. But mainly Dame in the first half, it looked like he needed a little more help, ended up getting it. Uh, shout out to Indiana, though. They're a young team. This isn't a big, big deal. you know. But I do want to see them with a little bit more fight defensively for the next game. I will say, given the fact that Indiana did have the season series, I was expecting more of a game without Giannis. But give credit where credit is due. Dame went out there. Middleton went out there. Brooke, Bobby, Malik hit some big-time shots. They went out there, and they executed at a high-ass level. Damian Lillard, I called it, on the nose, 35-point masterclass. He was absolutely phenomenal. This is what Dame does in the early rounds. But that's not why he was brought over to Milwaukee. We want to see that carry over into the second, third, and of course, if you're a Bucks fan, the NBA Finals. But let's let's stick to where we're at right now. Early on in the season, Dame told Tyrese Halliburton, "I'm cool with you celebrating on me right now, but just make sure when I get my get back, you keep that same energy." Today, the, it was a clear better player, and it was Damian Lillard. Uh, I am anticipating this to be better, a better series than what today was. I, I do firmly believe that the Pacers can make some type of adjustments that they're not getting their ass beat, especially if Giannis is not going to be playing. But I don't disagree. This series can be won without Giannis. I think we all felt that way coming in regardless that it may be a six or seven game series as opposed to maybe a gentleman sweep in five if Giannis were to be playing. But I feel even more confident that after this game, the Bucs can definitely handle this series, even without Giannis. If Dame's going to play at this level, if Middleton's going to be healthy, this is some of the healthiest basketball we've seen out of him in some time. You have Brooke knocking down. Bobby Portis, one of the best role players in the league, especially at the big man position. This is the Bucs that you were looking forward to. <laughs> no, no. Jante Porter's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Joel, I'm sorry. That that's a foul, a foul tweet for, for that man to send. But is he, wait, wait, is he listen, playing in Team USA? Be better. No way around it. What is he starts is he with he on Team USA? He is. This summer. He is. I thought he had the hamstring. What happened? It'll be oh, be healed up by that. He's still oh, he's still through this hamstring for seven oh, months. Yo, we should just hope that Tyrese oh. goes, rests up, gets uh -huh. healthy. Jalen Brunson comes in. Should have had the spot. Who actually deserved the spot? He should go out there and and represent. Saying, if your hamstring not right, I wouldn't play. Like I'm listen, man. All, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that you know, off of this performance, Tyrese Halliburton gave me. I now understand this. My favorite player stinking up, stinking it up in the playoffs like Drew does now because he Ooh, felt yeah. that way with Tua. He's the, NBA Tua. He's the NBA Tua. That's who NBA they're comparing Tua. him to. They it's hate, been hate. months. NBA He's Tua. Been asked for months. It's 19 been and 11, bad. baby. Oh, God. You would kill for that on the Bulls. If Kobe White's averaging that, you give him MIP. You give Kobe him White's MIP averaging for 19. 19. He's averaging 19. Exactly. And you give him MIP, but Tyrese averages 19 and 11. All of a sudden, are you critical? They're I, not on the same level, good. bro. Tyrese is better. Oh, we know that. You know what I'm going to do? Yeah. This, was, this was a tough game. Uh, I was surprised, first of all. I was surprised how many people were taking the Pacers to win this series. I think all of us ended up taking the Bucks, but that was before I think we got the prognosis for Giannis that we knew he was going to be out for probably a minimum of two, of two likely three games. Um, but I was surprised how many people took the Pacers in this game because when we were doing our preview, you know, last week or whenever it was, I mentioned how when the Pacers and Bucks were having these battles in the in-season <laughs> tournament and around that November, December, you know, area of the season, Tyrese Halliburton was playing like a superstar. He was giving you almost 30 a night with 10 plus assists. He had a 15 uh, assist game in there. Maybe it was 16. He was hitting threes. He was playing like a superstar. And that was even with Giannis on the other side. But Tyrese Halliburton hasn't been playing like a superstar for the last few months. And I tweeted this out earlier. They have a lot of problems. I think the Pacers, especially in this matchup, for one, 
I was shocked that Dame was getting so many one-on-one looks in that first half when he was just hitting bucket after bucket. I was shocked they weren't sending more blitzes after him. They did eventually start sending some doubles at him. There was one time they sent a double team. Dame made a quick pass. They passed it back to Dame. The two guys that were doubling him were nowhere to be found. He pulled up and hit a three. He was insane. This first half, this was, you know, the Damian Lillard that we knew, the all-NBA Dame that we've seen in Portland. It wasn't the same Dame that we've seen with Giannis. But if Tyrese Halliburton is going to have these type of performances or really anything that's not going to resemble what he did in that November, December part of the season, I just don't know if the Pacers are going to be able to get it done. If you're looking at a team led by Pascal Siakam, who, to his credit, had himself a great game, I don't know if a team led by Pascal Siakam and role players who I think are good. Neesmith had a tough game. Um, you got Miles Turner and Nemhard and these dudes, but they really struggled. You know, I was surprised how deep Rick Carlisle went in his bench too. I know he played, I want to say around 10 people in the regular season, but TJ McConnell played 18 minutes. He's been great this season, but I didn't think he looked great in his minutes. He struggled five for 13. Um, Doug McDermott getting seven minutes was a bit surprising too. I was just surprised how deep Rick Carlisle really went to his bench because typically you see about an eight-man rotation for the playoffs, maybe nine if you have a super deep team. So I think that's one of the adjustments is kind of cutting down the bench, letting your starters be out there. But an adjustment that isn't as easy to just, you know, write it up on a whiteboard is Tyrese Halliburton's got to get back to playing at a superstar level because even without Giannis, you could see it's going to be a tough series for them. You know, um, I'm looking at Tyrese Halliburton. He only took seven shots. I mean, that's unacceptable. That's you so can't weird. take seven <laughs> shots. You can't. I mean, the percentage is good. Four for seven, over fifty percent. By the oh way, it's not terrible. Oh my lord! You Stop. gotta take more Next than game. seven Next shots. Game. I'm gonna fucking throw up. I will say this: um, Pascal Siakam had thirty. He had an awesome game. <clears throat> the best player on the Pacers. I don't know what the fit is with him on this team, really, because they help off of him at the three point line a lot, and that leads to Halliburton when he's driving in the paint, kicking it out. Uh, to the three point to the, to the three point land usually to him, I, I feel like the Raptor they should have targeted was OG and Anobi, and we're, we're seeing it in this series where they don't have a perimeter defender, and the spacing is a bit wonky with him out there. I'm not saying that's the reason for Tyrese's struggles, but I am saying that it is a bit of an odd fit with Pascal in this offense. I think he's played really well with Indiana. But I, I don't know if he necessarily brings the best out of their offense. I just think Tyrese plays better. This team's better. You know, some superstars go out just chucking shots and missing. And then there's this guy. Like, he just don't even take shots. Because like, he makes the right basketball plays. Seven, man. Yeah. He went four for seven. He, shot he learned from LeBron in the 2011 tried. finals. He's made right three plays. turnovers. That's not Eight real. That's three turnovers. What, what are we really doing? Uh, that's still a two to one turn, uh, assist turnover ratio. That's not terrible. That's five assists, bro. Yeah, it's two not, to one. That sends, it's a drop off. He's dropping off. He's falling off in front of your eyes. You he's making the right it. plays. He's he's a he's two to a one assist to turnover player. ratio. If he's averaging eleven, that means his brother's having five turnovers a game. <laughs> That's what Russell Westbrook good. did in his MVP season. <laughs> it's oh, not good. God, now you compare him to Russell Westbrook. Now right. I'm just saying, like we've seen players with high uses do exactly what you're saying, and they were next game. Here we go. He needs a toolbox. Let's talk about Saturday. He's gonna he's gonna get a toolbox. Pelicans at Thunder. The Thunder beat the Pelicans ninety four oh, to ninety two. I think the Pelicans. If Zon was in this series, I think there's talk about this series being they could win this series seven exactly. Yeah. But without Zon, it's gonna be hard. But you gotta <laughs> admire how CJ McCollum came out to play in this series. Brandon Ingram struggled. Lou Dort and Herb Jones defense stars of the show tonight. SGA fourth quarter killer star to show tonight. This is one of those games where we've seen OKC all season long close out close games in the fourth quarter and be extremely clutch in the playoffs. It's a different atmosphere, but in their first playoff game, they showed that what they did in the regular season translates to what they do in the playoffs, how they stay composed in the fourth quarter and they close out games. The rebounding could be concerning with uh, the, 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 but the second chance points they allowed to the Pelicans, Jonas was dominating the glass. But I think this was a good start for OKC. SGA didn't shoot the best, neither did J Dub, <laughs> neither did Chet, and they still managed to to win this game by the skin of their teeth because CJ had a shot to ice it and he just missed. I'm I'm a little concerned. Um, I, I'm definitely I'm definitely a little nervous for sure. This is definitely one of those games where I was like, fuck. Like they had me sweating. I just think that the defensive presence of the Pelicans, like the fact that they have long, 
athletic wings. You know, they got Trey Murphy. They got Herb Jones. Najee Marshall had some good defensive minutes. Larry Nance was giving them troubles in the help side. Like, their defense was really on one. They gave SJ some struggles. You know, J-Dub and nonetheless. Jalen Williams had a great game. You know, hit, like, J Jonas Valanciunas isn't going to step out there. So you have free game to hit that jumper. And if you can hit consistently like that, you know, that's huge for this team. But JB, on, honestly, he destroyed Shet on the glass. You know, he, they was and even Larry Nance, too, they were able to get second, third. But I feel like it was a collection of them sending multiple guys at the basket to get rebounds because, you know, OKC is not the best rebounding team. Honestly, if Brandon Ingram plays better, they win this game. You know, like it, it, it unfortunately, it always comes back to him because Zion is hurt. He's not going to play for this series. If Brandon Ingram has a better game, they probably win this game. You know, with Lou Dortz on you, though, that's always going to be a tough challenge on you. He's one of the best permanent defenders in the world. You know, his physicality, the way he's strong, he can keep base, the way he can move his feet. Like, it, that's just a tough matchup. I thought both stars struggled. But in the end, of course, um, Michael Michael SGA Jordan just came out there. And he he put on a master class in the fourth, late in the clutch, did what he needed to do to will his team to a victory. But I am a little nervous because I think this Pelican defense does match up well with OKC in terms of just their length, the way they can get into the help defense, the way they can just move their feet, get steals, deflection. They kind of remind me of OKC on that side where they get deflections. They have length of uh, one through four. So I'm definitely a little concerned, but I do think OKC still wins this series. Like we said earlier on when we were talking about like this weekend's games, this was the main event. And it was funny because we weren't anticipating, it, especially without Zion. But hey, we counted out the Pelicans versus the Kings outside of Rave, of course. And they went and they handled business smoothly. Now here they are matched up against the number one seed in the Western Conference. And this was a hell of a ball game. It took some great defense on both sides, but with, with the way that OKC was able to grind it out, it was on that defensive side. You had Chet, you had SJ, you had J-Dub struggle shooting the ball efficiently where they shot, I believe, 41% as a team, but on the opposite side, hell, shooting under 40% from the field for the for the Pelicans themselves. You have to give credit to, to OKC's defense where they can have a lull on one side of the ball but still be so firm on the other. Chet having five blocks, having one of the bigger, bigger stops of the game down the stretch, having that block also – than SGA being able to stay clutch and, and and get buckets when you need him the most. Uh, I, I, am, I am concerned for the sole fact of you don't have Zion in this series. This game should have came a lot easier for OKC, but it is game one. It is their first time as – as one of the dominant teams, this is SGA's first time being a superstar in the playoffs. There was going to be some nerves. There was going to be the, their lack of experience was going to show. But I anticipate that as this series goes forward, we start to see OKC get a little bit more comfortable. This isn't the best for those that felt that OKC can be the team that can really match up versus Denver, that can be the one team that can give them the best series. But again, I think it comes with experience and understanding the Pelicans aren't the most experienced team in their own right. They just have a lot of guys, especially on the perimeter, that can play some great defense. And going up against a young OKC team, you saw the inexperience there, but they were still able to prevail and get this W. I am looking forward to see how they adjust offensively, uh, what's going to happen in terms of understanding it is playoff basketball. SGA is not going to be getting as many whistle as many whistles as he was in the regular season, but seeing J-Dub continue to be aggressive, seeing Chet continue to be that same defensive force and still being able to, to be a, 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 you know, a, a big man facilitator. That's one of his, one of his big strengths and seeing OKC continue to be a prolific three point shooting team, which we've seen all season long. It wasn't there today, but going to be interested to see how it translates moving forward in this series. If Zion is healthy, if Zion is playing this game, there's a legit chance they could win this series. And it sucks for the Pelicans because this was a close game, 94-92. to 92. It felt like down the stretch you really had a shot, but I think OKC made a couple of really big plays down the stretch of the game. You have the Chet block on Larry Nance. You have SGA hitting multiple big buckets in the mid-range. 
but it felt like a lot of stalling out from the Pelicans where they were able, them being OKC, were able to get these opportunities because they got outscored in the fourth quarter 24 to 20. Although they hit those shots down the stretch, um, I felt like the Pelicans offense really struggled to get anything going. You saw a lot of, I think, isolation basketball towards the end where it was Brandon Ingram or CJ McCollum. Thought Lou Dort did a tremendous job on Brandon Ingram. Of course, he struggled, but having Lou Dort on the other side is, is a big reason for that. If Zion's in this game and he's in this series, I mean, Lou Dort's a great defender, but Zion's going to be able to out-physical him, and there's really no other defender on the Thunder, including Chet, once he meets him at the rim, that I think could really stop his force. Unfortunately, he won't be there. Um, credit to the Thunder for surviving a really bad Josh Giddy game. He had two points, only took two shots, or excuse me, three shots. One for six, sorry, over two from three. That's what I was looking at. Um, it was a really tough game for Josh okay. Giddy. They had Casey Wallace play a bunch. Um, Aaron Wiggins came in as well, but... That's another, I think, factor that kind of got lost towards the end of the season because Josh Giddy was playing really good basketball, especially when SGA was dealing with his injury. He was going out there and sometimes leading the team in scoring. And this first playoff game, I think, is more, um, you know, shows us what it could be in the future. If teams aren't going to give him respect or if he's not even going to attempt a ton, a ton of shots or if he misses a couple of shots, he's not going to stay aggressive. But overall, I think OKC still has too much of a talent advantage to really lose this game and lose this in a seven game series. Um I would expect this to probably go six games. This, this still maybe could go seven, but SGA is the clear best player in this series. Jalen Williams is probably second. Then you could have that conversation, Brandon Ingram, Chet. And even though Chet got, I think, bullied a lot by Jonas, he's just a bigger dude. He's going to have 40, 50 pounds on him. I think his athleticism really showed. He had five blocks. We mentioned the one on Larry Nance, but his athleticism jumped off the screen, especially compared to Jonas. Um, and he tries, you know, like Jonas is, he's going to go down there and he's going to bang with you, but he's trying to do his best to at least keep his position or try to keep some box outs. But unfortunately, that's just a really big dude that I don't think he's be able to compete with. Josh Giddy, the first play of the game, he turned the ball over. He dribbled into a crowd of defenders and he turned the ball over. I think from there on, I was pretty sure that this wasn't going to be his game. I'm surprised you guys are concerned about OKC because without Zion, there's virtually no chance they win this series. Ah. With that being said, it was a one bucket game. I know on, on their home. I still sport. think OKC wins, but it's definitely going to yeah. be a lot tougher. It should be tough though because I, I think the Pelicans are a fantastic team. Even without Zion, I don't think Zion makes or breaks this team. It raises their ceiling, but it doesn't make or break the floor of what this team is. This team just two seasons ago stole two games against a 65 win team in a regular season. You know, they took the Suns to six games in the first round. Ingram was incredible and their role players are awesome. You know, you, they have some of the best depth in the NBA. So I think them staying in games is going to be fine. It's just them closing it out and they don't have their top end guy. So it's hard for them to close out games. But this should be a competitive series, but I don't I'm not concerned about OKC. I think they still handle business. I don't know. I just think when you when you look at it, like the Pelicans down the stretch were abysmal. Like all they was doing was chucking up threes. They weren't able to generate an efficient offense. And then you look on like, of course, you're gonna look further. You look further on to the next two teams you might play, where the Clippers have Kawhi and Dallas has Luka and Kyrie. Like now you're going to situations where you're, the best player isn't Brandon Ingram. It's three guys that can legit finish a game. That's why it's the concerning part for me. I'm looking more further because I think they do win this series, but I'm looking more further down those two matchups where, like, they won't have, like, you, there is, how are you going to stop those three guys as opposed to a Brandon Ingram? Dorcher Chamber, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. all of them. That's only one he's, dude. He's, he's a dog, man. J Dub is better too, and SGA. They got three guys that could defend at a high level. I just don't think he's, they're as physical as Dort is. No, they're not. But Dort is one of the I best. I can't believe you just said SGA and Dort was – I don't even know why you did that. No, I said SGA is a great defender, is he not? He he's is. a great team defender. So you don't think he's a great individual defender? And Like one-on-one? -on -one? No. I think he's okay. good. He's all right. All right. Ah, oh, this guy. He no. fell off, Joel. <laughs> oh, man. I just, yeah, I just, the SGA. I just, oh, man, I can't take it no more. I, uh, listen, I'm not you. I don't sit there and watch my dudes have triple singles and don't criticize them. You know, I, I, I don't think I, I don't think know, SGA is a like. I think he's a good individual defender, though. I just I just said that. I literally said he's good. I said that just now. You thought he was great. You said you said good. I did. No, I, I didn't hear that, Riv. What you? I what thought I you heard. I I heard you say that he's not that good as a perimeter defender. No, I said he's good. All right. I thought you said he's a good team defender. He's not. That no, good he's a division. great team defender is what I said. He's a great okay. team defender. All right, whatever. All yeah, I know yeah. is that he had a lot of stocks in the year, and 
I really do feel like his perimeter defense is great. I mean, he has Your length. Stocks come six, from five. mainly help, right? That doesn't mean he's a uh, he's just Steph Curry led the league in steals one year. I know, but I think SJ literally has the length to keep up with people on a perimeter. I know. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just don't think you're sitting there saying Kyrie SJ's on Kyrie. We're lit. <laughs> no, but I think I think if you put I think if you put Dort on Luca and you we're put lit. and you put J Dub on Kyrie, you're you're comfortable. We're lit. You're we're, we're lit there. You see what I'm saying? We're lit. SJ's like, ah, oh, we're not lit, but we're all right. Even if SJ is there, I think you're comfortable. Like, I don't think it's a you're comfortable. SJ is awesome. I agree. Tomato tomato though. Listen, uh Riv, one of your teams won um this weekend. The Cavaliers Multiple one. beat the Magic 97 to 83. It's hard for me to keep track of all these different teams. Lock in, Clippers, brother. Cavaliers. Yes. That's all we got right now. Okay, see, come on. Cavaliers won. Um, I listen, I I'm very concerned with the Magic's offense. I, I think in the competitive portion of this game in the half court, they had a 50 offensive rating. That's 50 points per 100 possessions for those that want me to boggle it down into a specific number. I love the Magic's young core, but I came away from game one thinking that Man, does Franz Wagner hold back the offense a ton? I was thinking the same shit, bro. He is the the guy that is mainly helped off of. Jonathan Isaac started the game. She went pretty well from three. Jalen Suggs has really improved. If I'm the Magic's GM, I'm giving Franz Wagner this offseason to improve his three-point shot. If he doesn't improve next season and he's still a poor shooter, I think you have to have conversations about moving on. You know, because... With the Celtics and Jalen Brown, there was a stretch where he was an inconsistent shooter. He worked on his jump shot and became very consistent and very reliable from there. And that's what's expanded the Celtics offense more. With Franz Wagner, it feels like on every Pilo drive, every Suggs drive, there is a defender with a foot already in the paint, and they're not worried about him at all. And I think that lack of spacing is ultimately the reason why I think the Magic are going to lose this series. From all the games I watched this weekend, minus the Celtics and Heat game, because I think that series is already over, I, I think I'm more concerned about the Magic and their chances in winning this series the most because they just don't have the offense to keep up with the Cavaliers. Their defense is great, but in the half court, if the Cavs slow the game down, they're just not going to be able to score. Yeah, this is definitely a learning experience for Orlando. You know, I think I think Boncaro had a pretty good uh, debut in the playoffs, you know, offensively. The turnovers yeah. were tough, though. Yeah, it, it definitely was. But I, I do think just as the guy that's, you know, he's the engine to this offense, the main guy, main creator, lack of spacing. You know, he did the best he could. And I thought one-on-one in scoring when he had a mismatch, he took advantage of it. You know, and I think this team, Orlando, they just lack that spacing. I do think Wagner... He's very simple in the sense of it's either I'm going to the rim and I'm doing the spin move, or if I got this wide open jumper, I'll take it. Like even with Jalen Brown, he worked on that midi to a T, and where he became one of the best mid range shooters in the league at a point. With Wagner, it's like I feel like the Cavaliers knew every time he was going to do a spin move, every time he was going to go to a rim, he couldn't take advantage of Mitchell, who's smaller than him, or anybody else. Like he was very, he was he was very he, he was put in the box honestly, and I think that really hindered Boncaro because he didn't have anybody else. I mean, you had Suggs for like a, a bit of a stretch. He made some good plays, but their guard play was awful. You know, their bench play was awful. Like they have guards that kind of do the same thing and don't provide enough spacing. You know, Fultz was out there not doing much. Cole Anthony was getting to the line, but that was pretty much about it. And then, you know, their big men, I mean, like what set the tone for them was Evan Mobley. Like he set the tone immediately to start the game, two big threes. And the Cavs just came into the building with different energy. Like, they, they didn't want to get punked. They looked like they were more aggressive. They lo just looked like a team with the mindset of, we know we can't lose this series, lose this game. And, I, you know, I said it before, like, this is this is Cavs in five if you get that Donovan Mitchell. If you get that Donovan Mitchell that's healthy, that's bouncier, that's engaged offensively and defensively, this is a team that, you know, that can beat this team in five. You know, Garland didn't shoot the best, but I love that he was pushing the pace, creating looks for others. Then, of course, you had Mobley, you had Allen, you had the other role players. The only thing I don't like is George Niang minutes because I just feel like he's such a mismatch defensively. And that was really when Boncaro was taking the time to just pick him apart. You know, I pray to God Dean Wade does come back. But I think that's the one thing I don't like. 
But other than that, I just thought the Cavs played a pretty sound game defensively. No, they're one of the best defenses in the league. That slow pace works in their favor in the in the Magic run a type of slow pace, and then they don't have shooters. So this is pretty much a bad matchup for that Cavs defense. If you if you can just get Donovan Mitchell and Garland to keep playing at this level, for me, I I, I keep the same energy. I think the Cavs can beat this team in five. To to me, it's pretty simple. We we've known all season long for the past however many seasons. The Orlando Magic do not have three-point shooting. I thought that we would address that, or I thought that they would address that this offseason. Didn't really do that. The most they did was draft Jed Howard and bring in Joe Ingles. No other no other shooting was added. Credit to Jalen Suggs for improving his three-point shot this season. Simply did not see that on Saturday. Did not shoot the ball efficiently whatsoever. And Joel and Riv, you're right on the money. Franz Wagner not being a three-point threat is hindering this offense terribly. He shot 7 for 15. I did I wasn't moved by his performance whatsoever. I mean the fact that the Orlando Magic have to rely on Paolo Boncaro essentially to be the offensive engine and essentially get everything going when they're got, when he's kicking out and these guys aren't hitting their wide open shots, I mean what what is there really to say? Credit to Donovan Mitchell for putting on a masterclass. I've got to give credit to Garland. I understand that he didn't have the most attempts, six of 11, but his playmaking I thought was excellent in this game. His passing's one of his his strengths, and he utilized it very, very efficiently against the Magic. But this one's going to be – this is going to be a, a tough series on the Magic if they don't start knocking down some shots or at least start being efficient in the box area. They just were terrible in that first half. They just could not get any shots to fall. But it's going to be interesting to see how they do make adjustments how they're going to use this time to 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 just gain a ton of experience. This is a young team, but just just try try what show me what you can do that you can make this series respectable because after game 1, I'm not feeling the best if I'm a Magic fan. This is uh game 1. We're one for one in terms of under 200 total points, 83 to 97. Yeah, uh, really didn't even didn't even really come close. The the Magic went on a bit of a run in the early third quarter, and it was like maybe a five or seven point game. I'm like, okay, maybe they could uh, make something out of this. But like you guys mentioned, you can't shoot this poorly and expect to win a game in 2024. I know the Cavs at least from three didn't shoot great either. They were both at I think Magic 21 percent, the Cavs at 26 percent. But when you look at the help around Paulo, I mean, you have Franz going two for six from three. Gary Harris was zero for five overall. Jalen Suggs was four of sixteen overall. You're asking a lot out of your year two player in a playoff series against when this team has been healthy, one of the better de defenses in the NBA. And now you're not going to really give him any sort of help. Like you mentioned, Drew Gary, or excuse me, um, Jalen Suggs has been a lot better from three this season, going up to 40 percent. But there really isn't uh, another guy, especially if Gary Harrison's shooting like that. And Jonathan Isaac is your second best shooter in this game. He goes two for four. A really tough game for the Magic. I think it was a great sign for the Cavs that uh, Donovan Mitchell was the best player on the court by far. You know, we mentioned the last two games going into the playoffs. He was back scoring wise, scored 29 and 33, I believe, those final two games that he played in the regular season. And then Evan Mobley was fantastic. Like this was arguably Evan Mobley's best game of his career, uh, his ability to hit some threes, um, defending at a high level as he always does. But this was one of the more impressive games from Evan Mobley. And being such a young Magic team, you do worry if the Cavs win two quick ones, they get up too well. You go back to Orlando, kind of how does that set in their mind for a super young team who hasn't had a lot of experience? I mean, outside of Gary Harris, I guess, has some playoff minutes, uh, Joe Ingles. But outside of that, you're playing a bunch of guys, but this is your first time in this setting. So you worry if you get down 2-0, kind of your head goes down, you get back to Orlando and you really dig yourself in, dig yourself into a hole. I was surprised that Jonathan Isaac started the game. Me too. He, to me, you. feels more like that chess piece off the bench rather than the center that they're starting out with. He was great defensively, too. Oh, my he was. goodness. Because I feel like they're using him as a rim protector for the defense. It makes sense. He has a lot of skills. But I, I would rather him guard one of those guards and just muck things up rather than him protect the paint. I don't know if he's going to keep starting him because I, I think that starting lineup Suggs, Paulo, Franz, Gary, and Isaac played a total of 44 minutes in the regular season entirely. So that was a very new starting lineup that Jamal Mosley threw out there. That was very much something that I thought would happen like after game two. That's like an adjustment. Okay, listen, we're going to throw Jonathan Isaac out there. For him to throw out, throw him out there immediately, 
I, I wasn't too sure about that about that decision. Game one, you're trying to 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 kind of catch the Cavaliers off guard on the road. Definitely caught me off guard, uh, but I, I'm not. I'm against it because I think Jonathan Isaac coming off the bench is such a just a, old one of the biggest power moves that a team does have to their advantage. He's been unbelievable both as an interior and perimeter presence. But I'm not too mad at it. You're a young team. You're trying to you're trying to catch the the, the Cavs slipping a little bit and try and steal one on the road. But I, I understand where you're coming from, and I don't disagree at all. That is definitely a mid-series adjustment that he just tried way too early in this series. The Timberwolves beat the Suns 120 to 95. And I think just off this game one alone, we've got the nominee and possibly the winner for one of the most viral moments in the playoffs. Anthony Edwards talking trash to Anthony to, to Kevin He's Durant. Electric. It was fucking lit. That was an awesome moment. First viral moment of the playoffs, Anthony Edwards. He was wearing the AE ones, the lows. They came out with a different version. They got he he was wearing rocking the low ones for the first time on court. It it didn't it didn't seem to bother him at all. Not at all. I'll Speak on this, the game. Man. Yeah, what, listen, what happened with the Suns, man? The tried to walk away from it. The Timberwolves second chance points, dominated the glass, fast break points. Jaden McDaniel's defense on Devin Booker mucked things up. Whenever Devin Booker got a, a drive to the paint, Jaden McDaniel's hand was on that basketball, and he was really making it tough for D-Book. In this series, the advantage that the Wolves are going to have is, is clear, and they're going to have this for the entire series. <clears throat> the advantage is the size, dominating glass, and their depth. Nas Reed and Nikhil Alexander Walker off the bench, they were exceptional for Minnesota. Those are the advantages the Timberwolves are going to have. The Suns, and this is going to be the story for them, whether they advance this, this playoffs or it stops them from advancing, they are relying on their star power. That's it. If they are not getting two of their three guys on their A game, Kevin Durant played exceptional in the third quarter he was a reason why they were catching up. Bradley Beal was solid, could have played better, but Devin Booker, if Devin Booker is playing like this, they're not going to win the game. It, it, if Devin Booker is struggling this much, it's over. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Devin Booker is too great of a player. I've seen him too many times in playoff series turn it up from a scoring perspective. It's going to be difficult because I think Jaden McDaniels is one of the best perimeter defenders in the world, but – Devin Booker has to play better. It's that's the thing I'm looking at with Phoenix is that he has to play better, and the role players have to shoot better. Grayson Allen was cold from three, and he might have an ankle sprain. It, it felt like their shooting wasn't there. And even if you're going to get dominated on the glass, you have to show better effort. I think the discrepancy was 52 rebounds to 28. That effort there has to be better. But if the Suns win this series, just off their star power. Because on the margins, the Wolves have the advantage. They're a better constructed team. They have more depth. They have more size. The, the stars got to show up for them. Man, this was a um, a defensive master class from Minnesota. You know, to start the game off, you saw Kevin Durant. He he to start the game off. He was on a quick heater. Like he they, had, they had Cat on him. I, I didn't like the decision to have Cat on him. You know, I, I felt like. I would have put Jaden on Kevin Durant because 6'10", long arms, would have had Ant guard and D-Book, and I would have just said, we're going to live with Mike Conley guard and Bradley Bill. I'm so not worried about it. Um, but they decided, you know, Cat on KD. And, you know, Jaden on Devin Booker worked because he was pretty pretty much neutralized the whole game. You know, and that's something huge because he's one of their point guards. He's one of their playmakers of the offense. But Kevin Durant was on the heater. I thought Kevin Durant kind of did no wrong in this game. He was kind of out there solo. And you mentioned it, the defensive – presence of Rudy Gobert, how he was able to switch out, guard the perimeter, protect the rim. You had Nico Alexander Walker, Kyle Anderson come in. They provide some defense. Nas Reed being who he has been all year off the bench and to him provide some defense. Like this team one through five has been connected. And then of course you had Kat, you know, who finally started to take advantage of some mismatches when he did have it. You know, and then you had Ant Edwards who had that explosion in the third quarter. He also was talking shit to Bradley Bill. I don't think anybody else peeped that part too. He, after he hit this big three, was talking nasty to Bradley Bill. So he was telling these old heads, like, yo, I'm here. And he outperformed all three of them. 
You know, and I think Minnesota, and I said it before, I think Minnesota is going to have to win off their defense. I think their defense is going to have to do 80% of the work. They're going to own the rebounding department by a wide margin. When you have Rudy and Kat, all they have is Nurkic. Nurkic played well, too. I'm not going to sit here and disregard him. He definitely did play well. But two down there with the Twin Towers, it's hard. And then you bring in Nas Reed, Kyle Anderson off the bench. That's tough to deal with, too. And, and I think Phoenix just doesn't have enough depth. You mentioned it. They're going to have to rely on their star talent. But this is a pretty tough matchup for players like Devin Booker and Bradley Bill. You know, they're small guards. They don't rely too much on athleticism. They rely on that ISO, wiggle room, more with their feet, their footwork. Excuse me. So it's it's definitely going to be tough. And I think for Minnesota, Phoenix not having a cohesive, efficient system and them kind of just playing ISO, go to their spots. I think that works in Minnesota's favor because I think they have the guys that can stay with you. They have the proper help. They have the proper rim protection. And then they're always going to uh, crash the glass. So I think, you know, for me, this – this definitely gave me the warm feeling about Minnesota because I think their offense does become stagnant at times. But defensively, you know, I, I'm just relying on that defense. I do think it's a playoff defense. I'm glad it gave you that warm feeling, Riv. Uh, I, I say this. It feels, it, it feels great, man. <laughs> the, the Wolves just out physical the Suns. And, and Kevin Durant's unfortunate. A master class of his was outshined by Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards was out there, and he was the king of the night. You could argue he was the king of the weekend. He went out there. And he could do whatever he wanted, whether he was getting to the rim, whether it was hitting threes, right in KD's face. You're right. I mean, it was it was the moment of the weekend where he's basically saying, it's my time. Your time's over. You're old. You're washed. I'm here. I'm the new kid on the block. And it's about time that I show the world what I can do in the biggest moments of the season. But I worry about that being the way the Suns can win, relying on their star power. And I say I worry about it because their stars come fourth quarter have yet to show up. We've seen it all season long. It was a historically bad fourth quarter team. Now, this is with Kevin Durant. This is with Devin Booker. Bradley Beal, who's been playing some pretty great basketball recently. I, I, I just... I worry, especially in a matchup where Minnesota is so physical. This is the best defense and has been the best defense in the NBA all season long. It's I, I, I just I worry if Minnesota is going to play that brand of basketball and if you can just neutralize or, of course, lessen the, the output of one of those two stars. I'll say one of those three stars because I respect I respect, excuse me, Bradley Beal. I just don't know if it's sustainable to win four games and get away from this series with the win. I think I, I look at what Minnesota's doing defensively, and if Anthony Edwards is going to play like this, and you have Carl Anthony Towns being inefficient, Nas Reed hitting timely shots, the one thing I, I would love to see is Jaden be somewhat of a better offense creator. It's not happening. We just have to respect that he is a defender. That's what he's known for, an all-NBA defender at that. But the performance he put forth on the defensive side on Saturday was excellent. I just would like to see his offensive game come into fruition a little bit more. But other than that, I mean, what a performance from the Wolves. And I'm anticipating this to continue moving forward. This feels like the blueprint of how the Wolves should win, at least offensively. I think night in, night out, we know defensively the Wolves are going to come to play. Devin Booker had a tough game, but that was because of Jaden McDaniels. I mean, that was one of the better defensive performances we've seen from him probably all season long. And I think the one mismatch that the Suns had was Kevin Durant on Carl Anthony Towns. You know, they started uh, they started Cat on KD, especially early in the game. KD had 18 points in the first half. He was efficient all night long, but in that first half when the game was at least competitive before things kind of got blown open in that third quarter, that's where the Suns were going to, and they were having some success there. But like I mentioned, this is the blueprint for the Timberwolves if they want to win. This is Anthony Edwards being extremely aggressive, putting up 33, 33, 9, and 6. He shoots 50% from three. You get Carl Anthony Towns, who shoots well from three. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, as we've mentioned, had one of his better offensive outings. He scored, Back. I want to say, 17, 18 points. He um, this is how the Timberwolves kind of have to run their offense. It has to be number one through Anthony Edwards. When he's able to have these type of explosive games, the ceiling for this team is awfully high because their defensive ceiling is the best in the NBA. And when Anthony Edwards is playing at this top 10 level, when he's shooting this well, when he's getting downhill, when he's getting to the rim, 
it's going to be hard to beat them. And I think on the margins, they did tremendous. You know, they out-rebounded the Suns. They near doubled up on their rebounds. Maybe they did double and clear them there. They hit 20 of 22 free throws. They hit 12 threes, shot about 37, 38%. They don't have to be perfect on offense. This was a, a really good offensive game. Not saying it's perfect, but it was a really good offensive game. Um, if they want to make a deep run into the playoffs, and I'm saying go head to head with Denver, go head to head with Dallas or OKC, okay, one of these teams down the line. Of course, you have to get past the Phoenix Suns first. This is what you need from your best player in Anthony Edwards. And Carl Anthony Towns has to continue to shoot like this. Nas Reed had some big buckets off the bench, but. Overall, if you're a Timberwolves fan, I think this is what you envisioned. Great defense, lockup defense, especially one-on-one -on -one when you're looking at Jaden McDaniels and his matchup, and you have Anthony Edwards dominating on offense. I think with how they guard Cat, there's going to be adjustment in game two. They started off with, I think, Grayson Allen on him. It was one of the smaller guards on him, and that's how they guarded him for the majority of the game. And what they did is that they just sent a hard double on him anytime he dribbled the ball, and that left three-point shooters open. I think that has to change. But Cat did an amazing job uh, exploiting mismatches. Anthony Edwards is knocking on the door of being a superstar. The two things he needs to, to get there is for the pull-up shooting to be consistent and I think for him to handle doubles better and be a better passer and playmaker. That's the two things. But he's already knocking on that door. And in the playoffs, each time he's been in the playoffs, his pull-up shooting has been really good. Yes, Riv? Question. Um... <laughs> When you look at OG and Anobi's contract, and then you look at Herb Jones' contract, okay, we lost Dels. Um, But when you look at both their contracts, and then you look at Jaden McDaniel's contract, is he overpaid as hell? What's OG's contract? 18. 18 mil? Yes. O OG's an understood free agent, though, and OG's going to get paid like 45 mil. OG's getting paid like 40 mil at least. Now, OG's about to get an exuberant oh, amount of money. Nuts. I say this. The contract's bad. The fact that his offensive creation is a negative, it, the contract on that alone is not great. At the same time, you pay him for the performance you got on Saturday. You go out there. I need you to play defense on one of the best scorers in the game. And you go out there and you limit him as much as you can. He went out there and he balled the fuck out. So Jaden McDaniels is getting paid 22 mil a year. He's in that 20 to 30 range for the duration of his contract. I don't think it's an overpay. I think Jaden is one of the five best perimeter defenders in the world. Yep. He probably did... he's probably top three if you can if you consider his length. Size. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't think Ooh. it's an overpay. He's somebody who he he's consistent Ooh. from three. He's a top five perimeter defender in the world. He's an all NBA defender. Those that's guys it. are getting paid. I no, mean, I, I don't think that's so, all though. you need to be, though. I mean, I don't I don't I don't see why that's a, that's not a bad thing. Herb is getting paid an insane amount. Alex, Cusco I think he will get paid. An I think Herb amount. will get paid an insane amount. I think you look at Trey. Well, Trey Murphy's a little bit different because he's he's I wouldn't put Trey that. I wouldn't put Trey I agree. Murphy in that I agree. Game. I agree. I Lou understand Dorch saying, isn't getting paid an insane amount. Like, I think they paid him to be better than what he's shown on the offensive end. And it's been a little shaky. I, they I paid him for that, some potential. Some potential was definitely baked into that contract. It was, but that JV that's, potential, that's necessary. Got him, got him bread. Because he's 23 years old. He's still young. I, I just think that this conversation, after he was one of the primary reasons awesome. he was why awesome. the Timberwolves yeah. won in game one it's is a bit premature. But, Joel, the, the offense really, like it, it's it's so, so, so bad. It's bad. That's not what they need him to do, though. They I don't agree. Need him to I, He's agree not a with, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, you look at – He could take that leap, Joel. Minnesota can really just – Yes, but – a whole yes, other level. Yes, but any lockdown defender at that level – OG Anobi is not a great creator off the dribble. He's, he's not, but at least he can give you anywhere from 16 to 20 points any given night. All of he's his shots shooter. are all of his shots are spot up shots. That's his shot profile. Shooter. I mean, that's, I mean that's, that's, that's valuable as shit. I mean, it that's is. what Jaden is, though. That's what Jaden is a, is is a spot up shooter, and occasionally he'll create some stuff in the mid range on like a turnaround fadeaway or something like that. What's Jaden attempts, all, man? All these lockdown defenders, whether it's Herb Jones, like when they put the ball on the floor, Jaden shoots not what they percent do. from three from the three point line. This season, last year he shot, I think, forty percent. No, yeah, last year, and then before that was thirty one, and before that was thirty six. So that was an anomaly year. 
<laughs> but he got paid off the 40% year, though. Got paid Shout off the novelist. Yeah. But even then, he's shown he could be a good shooter. Um, listen, Jaden McDaniel is one of the best defenders in the league, and he Devin Booker went five for sixteen, I believe. No, he in locked, game he one. put him in a straight jacket. And if you're having a defender like that that is putting a star player in jail, that's valuable. I think that that's ex- extremely valuable. I don't know and if OG's getting 40, though. I think 40 is a little OG strong. will get paid more than Jaden, though. I mean, we'll I, I think now, yeah. OG's contract will be. I believe in the 40 mil range because I, I think that. And if it's not 40 mil, Drew Holiday's got 33 a year, right? OG's at least right. getting 35 mil a year. I think that's the floor for him. I give OG 32. And if I'm not mistaken, with OG and Brunson on the court together, they've lost two games. Is Something it two like games? that. No, yeah, it's one of the best net ratings when they're on the floor together. All right. Can I ask? Can we please talk about the Lakers now? Because I need to be up at 5.30. Isn't that the next team? No, it's going to be the Knicks and Sixers, but I, I need to I, I needed to say something. Okay, the Knicks-Sixers, a recap of it. Joel Embiid, glad he's healthy. He fell on his knee. Deuce McBride, Josh Hart, Mitchell Robinson show. The others. My guys, others. Deuce McBride, baby, West Virginia product. Man, right. it only took Deuce McBride one playoff game to show he's better than Emmanuel quickly. It only showed Josh him Hart. One game. Don't forget Josh Hart. Josh Hart was big. Shout out Mitch quarter. Robinson. I, yes. look, I tried to tell you, Mitch, Mitch, man. He might have taken Hartenstein's starting spot. Who knows? Leave Listen, back, Mitch, man. Mitch, Mitch is he's a perfect matchup for, for MB because he's more physical. He's he he way some more than Hartenstein. And that's yeah, what Mitch he's, gives he's you. 270. He's a older. big man. Big shout big out to Tyrese Maxi though. Ooh, but now Maxi did the same move like 30 times and it worked every time. Started to heat up. He late. did that hit that that Euro step into the lane, just using his speed, and he got to his right hand every time. Game one, we won. Uh, Lakers Nuggets. I was watching this, and you know, Lakers were up for a portion of it. I was like, okay, this this looks good. I was a little nervous. This looks actually. good. Uh, but the Nuggets, it uh they have a way of making every Lakers game feel the same. They give you some hope, hate those and then they snatch your heart right out of your chest. D'Angelo Russell still still trash in the playoffs. Still no, not. It's, it's nugget. It's the Nuggets, bro. He, they're in his head. Yeah. They're in his head. It's the, that's the Lucy only James. Lakers Lakers franchise record in threes. Fucking franchise record. And you go out there and <laughs> one you give me one. Three. You give me that's fucking tough. one. I bet he on was him. terrible. You know, LeBron you James, the Anthony Davis, they were great. LeBron, though, in the in the second half, he fell Fair off. That was old out. man talking right there. Grandpa can't do that no more in the second half. He could give you one first half of great eccentric energy. Second half, he'll fall off. 39-year-old LeBron do. James would be the best player that the Knicks have ever had in their entire franchise. And yet, yeah, we won game one, and the respect. Lakers didn't. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Jalen Brunson was in a, a box. banged up Philly. You know what again? we what what it is in a box? Jalen Brunson, he was in a box. Yeah, hi. Riv, I gotta ask you this though, because I bro? mean, you usually chop at the bit to talk about players that you aren't the biggest fan of. Um, Mister Generational Efficiency last year in the WCF, thirteen points in the first round, game one <laughs> against the Nuggets. What do you got to say about that? Thirteen he, points. He, he wasn't bad. He he honestly he should have took Delos. He should have took Delos. He was nine shots. Crazy. He wasn't he wasn't doing anything to where I'm like, oh, he's he's killing or he's playing bad. He was just kind of out there. Yeah, I agree with that. That's yeah, perfectly said. Like, whatever. Just he a guy. More, he just should have been more aggressive. Just a uh, guy. Jag. Just a guy. Jag. We're call Austin Reeves just a guy. Is he better than okay. Grayson Allen? I don't. We're think doing so. this off game one. Grayson Allen's now better than Austin Reeves. We're doing this off game one. The guy who just went zero for three. We're doing this. I also bet on him. One. How, how was Spencer Dinwiddie? Not bad. Not bad. He what, had zero did exact, points. Did exactly <laughs> what I said. I don't rely on his offense. I don't give a fuck about his offense. All I ask is go play defense. Jamal Murray did not play well. I was yeah, lost. That's I was the rude. problem. Jamal Murray did not play well. I, again, they just need to be more aggressive. Jamal had 22 and 10, though. And what was that efficiency? He, he did not have over. a good game. You guys, you guys missed out on the Jamal Murray bad game. You're That's cut. what sucked. That's but nuts. but at the same time, Porter played well. KCP was hitting shots. Fucking Jokic had zero turnovers. Had thirty points clean on some of the most efficient basketball. And a lot. And I think two of those five misses that he had were right at the end of the shot clock, where he kind of just had to put a shot up. Also, I mean, 
it sucks that we lost that way where we're up 12. Immediately the lead goes down where they go on a 10-0 run. LeBron hits that three right before halftime. But I, I, I saw a lack of urgency from LeBron in that second half. And I'm I'm, I'm finding myself getting angry at D'Lo, getting angry at D'Lo, but I'm realizing very quickly LeBron is getting super passive. He's the, the lack of aggression was not there. Anthony Davis wanted to fucking win. Anthony Davis was fucking phenomenal on both sides of the court. He was hitting his turn away, uh, his, his fadeaways. He was hitting that little jump hook turnaround over Jokic. He played some great defense on Jokic and on Aaron Gordon. The, the, the guys around have to do their job. D'Lo, I, I don't anticipate one for nine again. I, I am anticipating a bounce back game. But I think what we can take away from this is we need to be more aggressive. Reeves needs to be more assertive. I need to see Gabe Vincent inserted into the lineup more than just fucking eight minutes because he is way too valuable on the defensive side for that to be the case. I, I also would be interested to see what Jackson Hayes in the lineup does just so we can get some extra size also. But we just need to start hitting our shots. We, we played bad, and it was still a good game. We should have won. It, honestly, I say should have won where we just weren't hitting shots. We played very well early on in this game. And then, like Joel said, every single Lakers-Nuggets game goes the same way. Where we feel like the Lakers should win the game, but down the stretch in the fourth quarter and, and sometimes in the late third, you just see the Nuggets kind of flip that switch. And now they, they're dominating the basketball game. That's 100% the truth. So I I feel like I have to start understanding that. But we played bad, and it was still a solid game. But, again, we, we can't live off that. I understand we're on the road, and my opinion was that it's going to be seven, so the Lakers are going to have to lose for sure. But at the same time, blood was in the water in game one. You go and you steal game one. Now the series is on his head. I just think that you, you miss a good opportunity, especially like you mentioned, Riv. This was not the best Jamal Murray game. The guys around did play well. You did see MPJ shoot the ball well. You did see Jokic play well. Aaron Gordon play well. KCP played well. But at the same time, you have to capitalize when one of the duo is not playing at their best, especially when LeBron and AD went out there, LeBron in the first half, and AD went out there and they balled the fuck out. What's He's better and more aggressive. What's a, what's a, you have lost nine in a row. What's a bounce back game? Winning. Like, duh. Michael Jordan wouldn't go out like that, man. You haven't bounced back in mad long. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah, all right. The Nuggets are our daddy. I, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. say they're not. They're a fucking daddy. I mean, I'm just anticipating <laughs> that we fucking play better one of these games and at least win fucking one. We're not getting swept. I, I just put that out there. We're not getting swept. Admitting that is wild. Am I going to be fucking oblivious to the truth? We lost yeah. nine straight. D'Angelo Russell's been fucking dog shit to them. He, he's yeah. made like fucking three threes in the last five games versus them. He's been they like they are legitimately in some of the players' head. It's the truth. D'Lo has been this trash game. though in the playoffs. He has, he has. But the Nuggets, he's been especially bad. He was good against the Warriors. He was solid against the Grizzlies. He was fucking unbelievable in the playing versus the Pelicans, but. He's a player. Against the Nuggets, he's really fucking ass. He was great in the plan to get with the Timberwolves when they beat the Clippers and they got yeah. into the playoffs. He's a playing merchant. He's he great was, in the plan. He was pretty great in that game. Yeah. I just saw Listen, somebody I, call I uh, Rudy Gobert uh, okay playmaker. That's what I just said, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's over, buddy. Lakers aren't winning. Listen, you were talking different to me at Kiku. That's all I'm going to say. No, I said, listen, there's a semblance of hope. You see that smile. If, if, oh. if D'Lo plays well. No, nah, it really you, is. Bro, 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 had, bro had two we strawberry sours in him, man. He He's was like, hey, to, the Lakers you know, can do it. He's trying to loosen you up. Lakers can do it. Hey, fuck it. I know why you feel confident, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's facts, though. Listen. Lakers in six, Lakers in seven means that the Lakers wow. have to lose. We can't jo overreact. Well, you said at Kiku they have a chance, bro. No, I told him, I said, I was like, you know, I think it could go to six. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I'll win. His, I'll tell you his words verbatim. He says, I see why you think you have a chance. I think that's valid. That's valid. That's, 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 that's a good friend. That's, that's, a, that's a good friend. That's a W friend. That's, that's, all I could, that's all I could give you. I can't give you much else. <laughs> all, I can ask for, all I can ask for from my brothers is that you allow me 
to bask in my delusion. That's it. I still believe, though. I still fucking believe. I don't care if we blew game one. Again, Lakers in six, Lakers in seven means we got to lose a couple games to get to the end of the road. I just feel like there's certain delusions you only tell to certain friends because you know they would give you positive feedback. Nah. I tell the fucking world, Lakers are taking this shit. <laughs> All right, man, whatever floats your boat, you know? Yeah, people are really hilarious. Can. Like, oh, it wasn't like the expected thing that the Nuggets were going to win at home. They have one of the best home court advantages in the league. Props of the weekend I want to give out to Rudy Gobert because okay. the way he was guarding on the perimeter. You were moved? Silence some critics. I, I know he can do that, but. It feels like that's been the knock on him that he's unplayable in those situations. But he was really good on Kevin Durant when he's let me uh, Riv. Last thing I'll say, and then I'm out of here. Uh, Thirty playmakers better than Devin Booker stamped. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's like 15 guards. So like playmaking, though. Again, it's such a gray area because scoring also does kind of cater into that realm. But Devin Booker does... is probably one of the most inconsistent playmakers in the league. Is Jason Tatum a better playmaker? I think they're like the same tier. Today, by the way. They're like the same tier. Ten assists. I don't Ain't care. Nobody moves, man. Yeah, I don't care about those ten assists, bro. Face a real team. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> you, you, you took Miami in the series, buddy, so what do you want me to do? <laughs> Face a real team, man. God damn it. So hey, next time we're going to go live, for all those that are watching right now, Will be Wednesday. Wednesday will be will be the final slate of game twos. Monday and, and Tuesday, there will be three game twos. Wednesday, two game twos. So that'll wrap up the game twos. So that's the next time draft we'll Thursday. be we'll be going draft live. Thursday. And the NFL draft, draft is on Thursday. That's gonna be a great time. Maybe we might find some time to record a full length podcast, you know, in there to talk about some NFL stuff, maybe some storylines with the NBA. We'll we didn't see. do our top five this year. We fell off. I know. We did. On the scouting stuff, one hundred percent. That's your fault. One hundred percent. We fell off. We're gonna. We should drop that, Joel. I think that we should figure some shit out to to drop our top fives. Yeah, you know we can. We can definitely do it within these next three days. It's just so hard because we can't record while the games are going on. Now, playoff basketball is too important. No shot. Yeah. Yeah. It's too important. I'm with you. I just think that it's so crazy how it kind of hit me this past week. I texted the Gucci. I'm like, yo. The draft is really on Thursday. It passed by quick for sure. It did. I'm excited though. I feel like this was the you're right. It flew by and now I feel like usually that time period is so long, but this this year it flew. And I feel like we did a good job talking about football topics that just weren't draft related. Yeah, we you did. know that we definitely were able to fill some things up. And then after the draft is it'll be much easier to talk about it. I'm with you. So that's a good thing. So that's gonna be it for us on live make sure you guys subscribe and hit the like button and drop a comment if you want to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time